Hello everybody, good evening. I'm gonna go ahead and start over on Instagram. Make sure you guys can see me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, come on in. And my name is Chef Ashley Shep and this is Cooking and Kicking It with Chef Ashley Shep. And tonight we're gonna be talking about how to let your kids help you in the kitchen. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, I, I don't want to mind, I don't want to let my kids help me in the kitchen, but I want to try to <laughs> help convince you otherwise as to why that's a good idea. So as you are joining me, let me know if you are um, watching on the replay by just typing hashtag replay, or um, if you are joining or replay or joining live, um, let me know how many kids you have and how old they are, and that will help me to know what ages we have to be able to give you specific tips and advice. So I am gonna make sure I can see everything and then I'm gonna get started. Okay, all right, so like I said earlier, my name is Chef Ashley Chef. I am a mealtime strategist and personal chef in the Atlanta area. I help busy moms get dinner done faster without having to order takeout. And so tonight was actually inspired by two of my followers over on Instagram. Um, they were actually watching last week when I talked about how to let your partner, your spouse help you in the kitchen. And they were thinking, I mean, why can't we do one for the kids? And so I thought, oh, that's a great idea because obviously a lot of us have kids and we want to, I don't have kids right now, but a lot, of, a lot of my followers and a lot of my customers obviously have children and trying to get dinner done with them can be a bit of a struggle just because obviously they might be running around the house while you're trying to cook or they might be um, distracting you maybe your spouse is not watching them all kinds of reasons as to why we want to try to get them involved and so all right over on Instagram we have Sylvia and Claudia and Claudia I was just talking about you um, in a good way to say that you are the one who actually inspired this to be able to help your kids help you out in the kitchen so thanks for joining all right so we're gonna we're going to hop right in. So um, one way that you can let your kids help you in the kitchen is to give them tasks that are appropriate for their age. And um, some of you might not know, but I'm actually a teacher by trade. I've taught for um, seven, I'm in eighth year, seven or eight years, and from kindergarten all the way up to high school. And with those students, it really helps you to kind of know what works with kids, what kind of things they're interested in, and what kind of things they like to do. And so, hey, Tiffany over on Facebook, thanks for tuning in. Um, and so having that knowledge actually helps me to be able to help the moms that I work with because they're able to know what they can and what, what they can do with their kids and what actually makes sense and what works. So um, one task you can have your kids do is to have them be in charge of like the kitchen inventory. Um, drop a one in the comments if you are somebody who ends up buying the two, three, or four things at the grocery store and you come home and you realize you already have them in the pantry or you already have them in the fridge. And I'm guilty of that too. And so um, if you have a kid that is old enough to be able to do that, and that could be somebody that's seven, eight, nine, um, they could actually be in charge of checking those things before you go to the grocery store. And it could be as simple as putting it on like a checklist for them. They could design it. It doesn't have to be something that works for you as the parent, as long as the kid's able to understand what it looks like and how to keep track of it. Um, so that's definitely a tip that would be easy for them to do. They could do it very quickly on their own time, and it doesn't have to be something that takes up your mental energy. So um, another tip you, to actually have them help you cook while you are in the kitchen is to put them in charge of small tasks that take up a lot of your time, but they, but they actually enjoy. Um, if you have little, little ones, like three or four year olds, they love to mix things, they love to pour things, things like that. And it's almost like cooking becomes like a science experiment. And so for them, even like pouring, pouring something that you already have in like a measuring cup that's ready to go, pour it into the mixing bowl. They love doing that kind of stuff. I know growing up, um, baking was one of my favorite things to do just because it seemed like you're just mixing all these things and making this potion. And so for kids that's something that they really enjoy. And of course with those things, if you have a kid that's younger, you're gonna to wanna to measure those out ahead of time so that um, the quantities are right. Um, if you have a, a student that's a little bit older, then of course you could let them do that themselves. Um, all right, let me check the comments to make sure. Okay, we have some more folks joining us. If you are just tuning in, um, let us know how old your kids are so that way I can give specific 
details or directions of what you can do with your student or with your kids. I keep saying students from the teacher background. <laughs> um, and if you're joining us on the replay, then just type in replay. So um, some other tips that you can let your kids do are opening cans. That's something that pretty much from, as, as long as they have hand-eye coordination, I kind of am a little hesitant to do certain ages because some people's kids are more advanced depending upon just their background or different things like that. So the age frames are kind of a guideline. It really depends on your kids. Um, so don't feel like just because I said this that it has to be that. It really depends on your kids. Um, so opening cans is another option. They have can openers that are um, the ones that do not jet out. So they're cool. They're not cool. I'm sorry. They um, they will not cut your little one's fingers even if they touch it. And, and it will also make it so the can doesn't become sharp when they cut it. So that's another one that's pretty safe that they would be able to do. And they could do that ahead of time. If you don't actually want them in the kitchen while you're cooking, you could have them just already set out and they could be opening those cans and then they leave, you do your thing. So I know we talked about last week, some of the moms and the cooks wanted to have the space in the kitchen to themselves. So they didn't wanna have extra hands all around. So if that's one of your, if you're one of those people, <laughs> then having those things prepped ahead of time would definitely help with that. Um, if you are having something that has a lot of ingredients in it, you could give your kid the list of ingredients and have them get them from the different parts of the kitchen. And that would help them to know where the things go. So that way, when it comes time to unpack groceries, they would then also know how to put them up. Um, which leads me to after you're done cooking, if it's something that you have leftovers or um, you haven't used all of an ingredient, they would know where to then put it back up. And a lot of these are little things that you just do that just obviously are second nature because you're not going to leave everything out. But these are things that take up a lot of your time. So if you're able to have somebody else do it, especially your kid, it's going to save you time. And then it's also going to help them feel confident because they're able to help with the completion of the meal. So as I know, I'm just kind of talking, talking, talking. <laughs> um, if you all have any questions or comments, definitely drop them in the comments and I will take breaks to be able to answer them. We have a few more folks joining us on Instagram. Thank you. Caramel kisses, and Claudia says she has twins. Oh, okay. All right, so she has twin grandchildren, four and then three years old. Okay, and then Mr. Thax, thanks for tuning in. Okay, let's see. Over on Facebook, Conrad said um, he's here to learn how to help his kids in the kitchen and let them do most of the work. Yes, so that is a good segue <laughs> to the next thing. Um, a lot of the moms that I work with, they have this, kind of, how can I say this? And just as a woman in general, a lot of times we feel like we have to do it ourselves. And there's certain things, ladies, that we just got to come out of that spirit. We can't continue to wear ourselves down because we feel like it has to be done our way. And that's something that could be with putting the dishes up, if your husband's helping out with the kids, doing the laundry. There's just certain things you have to just release to somebody else because it's gonna save you energy, it's gonna save you time. And as long as it gets done, is it really something that matters the way that it's done? So, and with some things it does matter. <laughs> um, but a lot of the things that we kind of worry about, we put added pressure on ourselves to do, we could kind of pass that on to other people. And so, um, Conrad is my brother and we have, he has, I have nephews from him. And so there's one in middle school to an elementary school. And so um, for them, if you have multiple kids, that's another option that's great because then they can kind of help each other. The older one can kind of show the younger ones what they need to do. Of course, you would be there to supervise, but um, it's, it's an even better option because you could even do like an assembly line. So maybe one kid, if they're old enough, is in charge of the chopping of the vegetables. Then maybe the next kid's doing something like stirring the ingredients in the pot. Or maybe the last kid is in charge of opening the sauces or something like that and so then it becomes like a family effort it's not just you being the one in the kitchen tired at the end by the time you sit down for the meal because you've exhausted all your energy doing this by yourself so excellent point Connor. thanks for tuning in um one thing that will definitely help out with this process is to make sure you pack your patience so with um the title of this, where I said to how to let your kids help you out in the kitchen without losing your mind and without whooping their behinds, is because I know with kids, you do have to have patience. And it comes from a place of their learning. And a lot of times when we're making dinner, 
we feel like we're just rushing, 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 rushing. And we don't always have time to take things slower or maybe we haven't bought an extra amount of the ingredients to be able to know, be able to fix if there's a spill or something of that sort. So when you're first trying this out, my suggestion is to pick a day when you're not strapped for time. So maybe like a Saturday or maybe like a Sunday if you're making breakfast or something like that. Try to pick a time where it's not gonna be life or death if the meal does not get done at that certain time. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give your child the space to explore. It's gonna give your kids the security of knowing that you're right there with them and that you are supporting them just like you would in any other thing that they're doing. And it's gonna help build their confidence because they know it's a special time with you and they know they're helping to contribute to something for the family. So excellent points. Thank you for that. Um, also, another tip of what you can do is before you even decide to start making the meals, have your kids give a little bit of input as to what you're gonna make. Now this doesn't mean you have to let them choose every single thing for the week, but maybe let's say you already know you're gonna make two of your family favorites. Maybe you're gonna try out a recipe on Pinterest and then maybe you're gonna get pizza one night or something just because that's something your family does. So when you're thinking about those family favorites or that Pinterest meal, ask your kids, okay, so what night do you wanna have these meals? You know you're gonna cook maybe Monday, Wednesday, Thursday or whatever your schedule, whatever fits in your schedule, but ask them what nights would they wanna help you cook? And that's something that my mom did is that we had choices we didn't have like the full control over the situation, but it felt like as a kid that we had a say and we had some control because we had options. And a lot of times with kids, they really just wanna have the option to have the input because as a kid, you, you don't really have control over a lot of things. And so if you're able to decide like, oh, we're making um, like pizzas on, like a pizza's an easy meal to make with your kids. Um, we're making pizzas on Wednesday. They're gonna be excited about that all week. And when Wednesday rolls around, they are going to make sure that they are doing their best job to be able to make sure that still happens. And they're gonna feel really proud when the family sits down to eat that for their meal. Okay, let's see, I'm checking in the comments. Oh, I guess y'all are listening because y'all are quiet out there. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, okay, so an additional tip that I want to leave you with, and I think I'll probably do one or two more, is to have a plan but realize that that plan could change. And just like with anything in life, kids are sometimes unpredictable. And it could be that they're super excited about it or they were really looking forward to it and then maybe something came up and they decided that they didn't want to do it. Or maybe the way that they're doing it is different than you had previously envisioned. And that's okay. It's not something that you really need to get frustrated about because really your end goal is getting dinner done. So if dinner gets done, with your kid 20 minutes later than it was supposed to, that's fine because now you've created an experience. And that's something that, um, I'm not sure why I've read it before in an article, but that people, in the end, they value experiences more than they value gifts, like physical, tangible gifts, because it's a memory. So you've created a memory with your child and with your family, and it's gonna be something that they remember for a lifetime. Um, for example, with me, I remember getting my first Easy Bake Oven. I think I was like 10. And we had to go to like three different stores to get a light bulb that was strong enough to be able to cook the food inside the Easy Bake Oven because you have to get like a 100 watt light bulb. So I remember going to two or three different Walmarts. And then when we finally got it, I was just so happy and so proud of myself to be able to make, I think it was like sugar cookies um, for my family for, for us to try it out. And it was, it was a family experience because they helped me mix the ingredients. My older siblings helped me read the directions on the box to make sure I was doing it right and things like that, obviously I could read at that point. But to make sure, since it was cooking, they wanted to make sure I did everything the right way. And so that was an experience that I will use and obviously it's helped me now because I've decided to become um, a chef. But that's just something you wanna focus on when you are making these choices to be able to help, to let your kids help you. That it's, it's not really about how quickly something gets done, it's more so about spending time together. So, um, if you are thinking that you'd like to try this, but you are not sure where to start, I would like to invite you, if you're in the Atlanta area, to order the family style meal kits. They include servings for four to six, four, four servings per family. It includes a seafood and three non-seafood options, or I do have an option with, that's two seafoods, seafood options. And with those, they come fully chopped, seasoned, and ready to heat neat. And so these meals are set up really nicely for your kids to be able to help you 
because a lot of the measure the measuring's already done and they would really just have to follow the five steps or less. So if you have older kids, I would say middle school and up, they would actually be able to make these meals for the family with a little guidance when it comes to the oven or the stove, things like that. And so if that's something that you're interested in, then definitely check out the link in my bio if you're on Instagram. And if you're on Facebook, then I put the link at the bottom of the description in this video. If you have any questions about those or other ways to let your kids help you in the kitchen, then definitely post it in the comments. And once again, this is Chef Ashley Chef. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Cooking and Kicking It. Have a good one.